Matt, welcome to A Word to the Wise. It's amazing to have you here. How are you doing today? Jimmy, I'm doing well. I've got a nice cool ocean breeze coming in the window. Really enjoying to wrap up the day with our conversation. Yes, me too. Um, so I'm just really interested about your journey, really. Um, you know, I know you talked about getting to a point of wanting to, you know, end your life and then realizing that that was not the path to go down to now becoming a alternative lifestyle coach. So can you just talk to us a little bit about your, your journey? Yeah. A slight different note is I did actually attempt to take my life. Mm. Uh, I put a bullet in my head when I was 18 in 2004 and it's been a long journey since then. It's been a, since 2004 and What's really significant about that night that also segues to the life I live now all those years later is that night ignited in me a desire to live and a desire to live what I experience as my fullest potential, my soul's path, my heart's path. Because I remember that night I put the gun to my head and I pulled the trigger three times before it finally went off. I remember it all happening. I collapsed. I'm lying on the ground and I remember hearing everything is blacked out. And I remember hearing a voice that I'd never heard before inside of me. You are not meant to die today. And I just snapped to my whole body, like woke up and I was able to literally stand up and run up a flight of stairs and get to a paramedic essentially. And that fire that ignited in me then took me into my recovery period where I had to relearn to walk again after even after being in a coma for a while. And that really started the path that then took me into developing my intellect in college and really trying to do something with my life. Cause at the, where I was heading at the time, I was either going to be in prison or dead. Like I was very fortunate. I hadn't been in prison yet at that point in my life. And I was just really out to prove something for myself that I could do something that I could be someone that I wasn't, worthless and powerless that I felt in those earlier years. And, you know, that took me further into uh, my corporate work where I spent a, I started out out of college with what people might call a dream job, supporting a big tech company. And within three months, I didn't like the culture and I quit. And I had moved to Atlanta and was living downtown and I couldn't stand the culture and I left. And I was like, I moved back across the country. And then that opened the door for me to start in a startup position supporting Google. And I spent the better part of a decade from the ground up building a national team out from four to a hundred people roughly. And had been like this catalyst for the skills I developed, my ability to create relationships, to understand people, to have humility, courage, all these things. And I loved it. And then I reached a ceiling where it felt like I was now trapped by the ideas of this one company and I wanted to grow beyond someone else's ideas. And I took my, my leap with, I took my leap from the golden handcuffs as it were um, with no real plan other than I had some savings and I was going to figure it out because I was called to go into my own business. And I spent some time traveling and really kind of finding who I was trying to grow into at that point. And fast forward, you know, now to like the title alternative coach is ultimately I have lived, I have lived various conventional stories and all along the way, I have found myself wanting to find my own alternative way to live in a way that felt really aligned, resonant, integrous, to a deeper part of me that is, was really trying to breathe and live. Wow, that is such a powerful story. And I have so many follow-up questions. The first one, because I'm curious, what were the circumstances, if you're comfortable sharing, that made you want to end your life at 18? At that point, it wasn't so much that the external circumstances were bad. I had had some experiences early on in my youth, uh, as well as some family emergencies, grandfather dying when I was a young age, my sister had a brain tumor, 
um, and some pretty extreme surgeries uh, and just some various events that really, for lack of a better term, made it hard to be in my own head, made it hard to be with my own emotions, made it hard to literally be with myself. And at that point, I literally could not find a place in myself that believed a better future was possible. It was like the only way that I was going to find peace was to die. And I didn't know any other way. And I didn't have anyone to help me. I didn't, I don't think anyone knew how to help me or reach me. Um, but what ended up happening was fast forward after I shot myself and I was in the hospital, I remember being on the, the roof of the physical rehabilitation center I was in. I was in a wheelchair. My legs are just dangling. They're useless. Uh, I'm in a hospital gown. I'm smoking a cigarette at the time. And it really just finally hit me that I had spent a lot of my life blaming other people. I was really angry at myself. I had a lot of hatred toward myself, but I was had so much anger and rage that I couldn't put it all towards myself. So I also put it towards parents, teachers, everyone around me. But when I was sitting there in that wheelchair, unable to walk, I had to finally face that, yes, while there were some bad social circumstances and some bad situations, I was the only one that pulled that trigger. I was the only one that put that gun to my head and kept pulling the trigger. That was both devastating to realize but also one of the most empowering moments of my life because the moment I finally allowed myself to recognize I chose this and these huge crocodile tears just started falling down my face, actually soaked the cigarette, put it out. Within seconds, I felt this fire just go all the way through my body as if a light switch went off. And then all of a sudden I had a reason to live all of a sudden I was able to see that there was something more for my life and I was going to go figure out how to live it. I didn't know what that meant. All I knew it was there and I had all this energy for it. And something I didn't add, but I want to make specific was I mentioned the night I shot myself. I heard that voice talk to me. I heard it in that moment too. And it said, you are not meant to live this way. You're not meant to live in this chair. And I spent the next few weeks devoted to walking again, ended up taking my first steps again for my father's birthday in front of him. I'm so happy to hear that your attempt at taking your life was unsuccessful. And um, that voice you keep talking about that, you know, was speaking to you because something you talk, a guide that you've put together um, is learning to listen, creating clarity and alignment. And by you listening to that voice, you were able to gain control and take back control of your life and sort of start carving the way forward for mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do, right? And to start evolving. So can you talk a little bit about why it's important to learn to listen to the guidance that we're getting from our higher self and also why we need to embrace personal evolution. Mm. You know, the why we want to listen, it, it's, it's not cut and dry. I don't want to come on and act like I'm some expert because I'm a human like everyone else. Um, and I have no desire to be an expert. Uh, what I do know, though, is if we are a human being that is seeking to live a full life, if we are a human being that wants to get to our final days and our final breath, and being able to say, I lived my life in the way that felt right for me, as the me that I know myself to be, and there's no regrets, and there is that feeling of, I'm good to go. It's time for me to go, and I'm good with that. The only way that we're going to find our way to that feeling is knowing who we are at a level of sovereignty. Who is our sovereign voice? What is our sovereign voice? What does that look like in the way we make decisions? What does that look like in the way of how we choose our values? 
What does that look like in the way that we um, treat people, treat others, treat our health, treat our bodies, make money, all the things. And so if someone finds that important to them to get to the end of their life and feel that, that's the way there is to cultivate that relationship with themselves, not to be a replica of anyone else, not to be a replica of someone else's ideas. It doesn't mean we don't learn from other people's ideas. Other people's ideas are great, but we've got to be able to distill what's useful and aligns with our core and allow that to help us navigate. And so my why is if you want that end of life experience, give yourself the time and space and build the trust with that inner relationship so it can guide your life. So that's the why. But again, it is still a matter of choice. And what do you want for your life? And as far as should embracing personal evolution, I was, you know, I'm sitting with that. And I think at one point, I probably would have said we should embrace it. And then the more I sat with your question, when you sent it to me, you're like, you know, why should we? I was like, you know what? I don't truly believe we should do anything. I think mean, what we need to do is really check in with ourselves and say, who do I want to be? Who am I? And how does that inform the way I live my life? How does that inform the way I treat myself, how I treat others, how I support the current generations in the world, future generations? And let that be the energy that drives us because often the energy of you should do this, you should do that comes from a place of blame and fear and anger and not that it's not sometimes rightly understandable but if that is the energy that drives us fear and anger it is disconnected from that deeper voice that would actually allow us to see something that could be more aligned with a um, a how do i put this in words a way of seeing the world that is less hostile less violent less forceful more cooperative and more collaborative. Yeah, I like that. That's excellent. Um, when I was thinking about that question as well, when, you know, thinking about asking you, um, and I think, I guess the better word should have been, why should we, but it still has that word should do something. Should we fall in love with, you know, personal evolution? And I think when I sat with that question myself, I just thought that, um, falling in love with the idea that you're as human beings we're going to evolve and mm -hmm. who i am right now is not going to be the same person five years from now yeah. um, allows me to give myself more grace and yeah. fall more in love with myself i i saw a post on instagram and it said that you can't shame yourself into change. You have to love yourself into evolution. And <laughs> yes. it was really good. It was really, oh, really good. That. Yeah. So that's what I think about, you know, when, you know, about falling in love with the journey of personal evolution, because mm. I think, um, I think it's kind of saying like, we should fall in love with who we are as people. And okay. I think that's, sorry, go ahead. I was to say, you brought up a great question. I'd love to ask you is what, what helps you fall in love with your own personal evolution? Yeah, it's been a journey for me as well. Honestly, I think over the last couple of years, um, I've had a real reckoning and had a lot of, of growth and I guess a lot of epiphanies of just really understanding, you know, my external world and how it's being, it's kind of a mirror into my internal world. And similar mm -hmm. to what you said at the beginning of just realizing that it was always like, well, all these different situations are the reason why I'm the way I am. Like all these different things outside of me are the reason why I'm unhappy. And yes, there are external situations that are out of our control, but it was giving my power away and um, felt really unworthy in a lot of situations, felt um, unlovable in a lot of situations, found myself falling into a lot of people pleasing um, scenarios, which was not healthy for me at all because I was trying to convince people or 
um, be in situations where I felt like I was accepted. A lot of it was, you know, projections because, you know, I think I do have a lot of people in my life that love, respect me and value me. But yeah, it's it's been um, it's been a journey finally realizing what it means to love yourself because you hear that a lot mm. in social media. Love yourself, love yourself. And it's not really as intuitive as people um, make it to be. And I think I finally realize and understand what it means to truly love yourself and be at peace with yourself. And it really aligns with a lot of the things that you've been saying. So um, I've been embracing it because it's been making me a better person, um, especially to myself, because I haven't been great to myself. And because I'm better to myself now, I'm, I show up better, more authentically in my relationships and with other people as well. And I feel at peace, even in the storm. You know what? Uh, two things that really stand, no, three things, three things. There's a lot there. <laughs> One, I love that warm smile that you, you're sharing right now with us. It's like, yes, the warmth of, yeah, this is true for me as you share it. Like I can see the genuineness between in the energy of what you're sharing right now. And what I sense and feel is you've walked quite a journey with it. Yes. It's not, it's not been something you woke up and it was just all there. <laughs> no. Um, but you know, just bringing it all together for us here is I can sit here and sh chop up my journey for the last two decades in all kinds of ways, but the core essence of all of it, the biggest piece of all of it is I have been navigating my life, trying to fill the spaces in myself in a way where I just can feel my own love, mm. my own embrace and my own acceptance. Because every time that I go deeper into that and I experience just a bit more and just a bit more, I'm kinder to people. Yes. I'm more caring. I do better in my career. My health is better. My family relationships are better. Literally everything around me improves because I'm coming from that place within myself. Yeah. You know, and what I came up as a wondering for you is how do you experience love? Because I, I, like a client of mine said very well recently, as we started going down this path for him, I can think about love, but think, love is not a thinking thing. It's a feeling thing. So how do you experience the feeling of it? Yeah, that's such a great question. Because I, I think, though, that although I've been on this, like, journey towards self-love i've had so much love within me to give um ever since i was younger and i think that you know being in a world where you see a lot of negative things it just how i was experiencing love started to become very distorted and i since i've been on my journey i will say that i'm constantly sitting in the essence of love um just love for my life. I have another thing I've I've learned to do well is just fall in love with the idea of living in my life, no matter what stage I'm in. So I'm constantly engulfed in love because I love myself, I love my life, and I love the people around me in a way that I don't need anything from them. I'm just exceptionally grateful that I'm having this experience right now in this moment with the people around me and also just with myself as well. So I, I'm, I'm always sitting in love. May, may I ask one more question about it? Yes, yes, for sure. How did, so you shared about the impact of love and ultimately kind of the warmth that brings into your life. What's like the, and I, I'm going to share why I asked this first, just because mm -hmm. it can be sensitive for some people, but of course I feel uh, my experience, like with my clients as well as myself is a large part of what keeps us from this personal evolution, feeling more graceful, as you said, feeling more easeful, feeling more enjoyable and uh, stable is we're disconnected largely from the feelings in our body. Yeah. And so I wonder for you, like, how does love feel in your body? That's a great question. Um, I think part of why I was struggling for the last couple of years is because I was so disconnected from my body. I've always been disconnected from my body. It's really been hard for me to really sit inside my body and really be in this three-dimensional space 
And recently, um, through meditation and going on daily walks, I've really been able to connect with my body and not run away from it. Um, And I think that also has to do with self-love. And it's funny that you bring that up because in me kind of making peace with my body and this existence right now and my physical form and going on walks and meditating, it's actually sped up the process in me, like that whole essence of peace and always sitting in love, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think that's a great question. Um, So I I experienced love within my body through meditation and a daily practice of, of going on a morning walk are there are there specific sensations that you associate with it um my heart is always full so my my heart always feels very open i feel my heart chakra a lot more open Mm -hmm. um i feel like my senses when it comes to to smells and and Mm -hmm. just feeling the wind against my body um and just also Mm -hmm. like not to be cliche but literally telling myself you know i love you thank you for keeping me healthy thank you that you know i have my my hands my my feet and i and i can walk and um so i just i feel it all over but the places i think i feel it the most are you know within my heart chakra and also in terms of like um smells and 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 textures against my skin There's a deep sensitivity there yeah. to feeling. Yeah. And your sensory experience shifted. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And I've also become like, um, so on my walks, I also like find myself staring at the trees a lot more. Um, I've also really become a, a, a an animal person. I never really was into pets or anything like that, but I just my heart swells up whenever I see like a dog or a cat or some sort of like animal. I find myself being more connected to them as well. And again, that's another expansion of of love that I've been feeling a lot lately. Mm. Yeah. I love this conversation. Yeah, I love it as well. I know we just we just kind of flipped roles a little bit and I became the guest and you were the interviewee, but that was that was so great. I, I kinda wanna turn those questions back on to you. Absolutely. Um, could you give a little bit more insight on your evolution? What are some of the lessons that you've learned so far, mm. like that have really resonated with you and how do you experience love um in your life? Where, where would you like me to start? I would love for you to start from the point of your personal evolution and what are some of the lessons you've learned so far that have really resonated with you? You know, the first leg of my journey since 2004 was really about me. It was one driven by this deep desire to make something of my life. But a big part of that desire to make something of my life, to prove to myself that I could be this deeper thing that I didn't know what it was at the time. I just knew there was more for me. That's all I knew. It began by me developing and pouring myself into growing my intellect, growing my mind. I was hungry for skills. Like I I went from being like barely finishing high school to straight A student in college and graduated with honors and got almost a full ride. Like I was just hungry to to grow, hungry to learn. And part of that is a few things. One, it was very important for me to develop myself in a way that I could be financially stable. I had the skill sets and the things that I needed. I'm not saying you have to have an education to do that. It's just the path I took. But I needed the skill sets and the mind that allowed me to navigate society in a way that I could have some kind of income, I could have some kind of housing, things like that, which, you know, where I had started from, it would have been really difficult. It'd be much easier for me to be broke than it would have been for me to have money um, from the place that I was experiencing life from. And so the first couple of things there were the realization of how important it is to really grow our intellect. And if we have brilliant minds, that's great. It, there's, another, there's another side to that coin. Um, the other piece too, is that 
so often what I see in spiritual circles and things like that and uh, common conversations around love and things like that is there's a degradation of the mind as if the mind is bad. Forget the mind, forget the ego, all these bad things. And yet we have to pause and realize that one, the mind is a powerful tool. These things that we see, beautiful architecture, beautiful innovation, things like that, they're born from the mind, even though the ideas may be sourced from a deeper place. What becomes often the case is our brain is taking the wrong pecking order. Our heart, that deeper intelligence with ourselves is meant to be the lead. And then our brain is just supposed to help carry things out. And so many of what I, things I realized over time was that my brain was trying to keep me feeling safe, trying to meet my deeper needs, but it was doing so and only in the ways it knew how. Um, so I want to just acknowledge that for anyone listening, if they feel like they're fighting their brain, like that inner critic is really just kind of, ah, why does it judge me so much? Um, one is just recognizing that your brain is just trying to do what it does best. It's trying to keep you safe and you don't have to fight it. If you can find what you can appreciate about your mind, it can be really, really useful. That's one thing. Two, as I continued down this pathway, uh, as I started to get towards the end of my corporate work and actually my fiance left me in 2017 was when I really began going in deeper into my spiritual and emotional work. Because I remember in 2017 when she left, I remember viscerally sitting in that kitchen floor crying, going, and I did this too. And I remember that same voice talking to me and saying, and this is good. Now you get a chance to rebuild um, and really get a chance to really grow myself. And that's when I began pouring myself into like therapy and coaching and like, what does it mean to have a life purpose? And what does it mean to have an impact with my life? And how am I impacting the world negatively? And all these things that I had never really considered to that degree. And some of the realizations I came, and I'm going to break this down because there is the mental, there's the emotional, there's the spiritual. On the emotional level, one of the biggest things that I've had to realize is that no emotion I'm ever having is wrong. The emotion to any situation does not deserve to be judged. It doesn't mean that the behavior matches the context. It doesn't mean accountability is not important, but what it does mean is if I'm feeling afraid right now, or I'm feeling angry or ashamed, that to judge my own feeling, to make it wrong, actually hurts me more and actually holds me back from any kind of change. A client that I was just on a call with, we we're talking about, he's really connecting to the importance of this energy of acceptance being a pathway to a more fulfilling life. And one of the things we talked about was he was having a lot of frustration come up for him. And we walked through helping him experience acceptance for his own frustration. And when he did, he felt like he was taking care of himself. He felt like he honored himself. The frustration was able to lessen and he was able to get new insights about how to move forward with this world and his life around him. So that's a really big piece, piece on the emotional front. There's more, but I, I, for time's sake, I won't tell them all. On the spiritual front, this has been the biggest one that really I didn't have words for all these two decades because it's been this deeper spiritual place that's been guiding me for nearly 20 years. And it is what I would call my soul. It is what I call my heart. It is my intuition. I don't want to get too caught up in labels because that can throw off the significance. But there's that deeper voice that has been pulling me all along that the night I shot myself, that night in the wheelchair, that night on the day on the kitchen floor in the house where my fiance had left me and many other times that have been guiding me. And at, over the years, as I had developed my intellect and I was able to feel safe and I had a home and I could keep a job and things like that. And then I started creating emotional safety and getting rid of some of the, not as I'm not saying this as a judgment, some of the emotional baggage that I was still carrying from the past. As all of that started to clear up, I was able to hear this voice louder and louder and louder. And what I had realized when I look back over the past 20 years, near 20 years, every time I've listened to that voice and really known that I was listening to that voice, 
and taken a step, it has always taken me to the place I needed to go that served my life most. And so if there was one thing I would say is in the early stages of developing this connection, we have to grow trust. We have to know how to hear it and we have to take baby steps to grow trust in it. Because if we can grow trust in that, that is what opens everything else up. And so I look back and I laugh going, wow, I've been following it a lot more than I realized all these years, but it took me until the last two years to actually realize what I've been following the entire time. And so that's the fun part is that we're all guided by a deeper place in ourselves, but we have to find the way to navigate inside ourselves how to hear it and how to listen to it and how to respond to it. And that's largely why I created that guide that you mentioned earlier. I love what you just said there about learning how to trust that voice. Cause I think people do hear it in their life, but they're not sure if they should trust it. But you also said something that whenever you listen to that voice, it's led you down the path that you were supposed to be on. And mm -hmm. everyone that I've heard talk about listening to that voice always says they made the best decisions from listening to that voice and they were headed down the right path. Um, but I love how you broke down your evolution from a mental standpoint. I do think that, you know, the mind is very powerful and it, it doesn't need to be demonized. Our ego does serve a purpose. We also know that it's a huge source of a lot of our pain, but if we channel it properly, it does serve a purpose. Yeah. And then I love how you went into the emotional side of things as well as the spiritual side of your evolution. And that was you know, really beautiful. And the question for you is with all of those different stages of your evolution, how do you currently experience love in your life and how do you accept love in your life? Mm. Oftentimes when I experience love, it, it leads to me having tears in my eyes and it's not a tears of sadness or anything it's just just this deep feeling of like this makes it all so worth it it makes everything that i've experienced worth it it makes all the challenge and struggle worth it um i experience it as this opening where my body just finally fully relaxes and just kind of melts into the moment and i'm just like i'm just kind of here and I'm able to just enjoy the person I'm sitting with or the book I'm reading or the moment that I'm in. And there's a lightness, a clarity, a warmth that really comes with absolutely no worry. There's no stress. There's no fear. And it's just this, this moment that feels like it just kind of stands still in time that just magnifies and loudly. And I, I, when I, when I feel it, like it's some of the deepest levels of feeling it, it is, I pause and I'm just like, that's great. And I will note that it has been a long journey for me with that. Like I, I still, to this day, I'm still in a process of cultivating awareness around when I really experienced love for, cause for, for many years, I didn't have my first feeling of recognized feeling of experiencing love until I was nearly 30. Um, there were many years where I didn't have access to that. And that was due to my nervous system, my mind, my emotions, and a lot of things really blocking me from it. So that was my, that's my, how do I experience it? How do I accept it? What I've come to realize is that a couple of things. One, if, if any moment of my life feels scarce, if money feels scarce, if I feel like I have a scarcity around money, I have an entry point to look at where I'm not loving myself. If I feel like my partner is not loving me enough, I have an entry point to see where I'm not loving myself. Anytime that the world feels hard, it's not that there's not things that are challenging, but I can always trace it back to a chance where there's a chance to love myself and find that place in myself that embraces me. That said, there are moments where it's really hard to access that in myself. 
And so the warmth of my partner or the warmth of a friendship, a smile, um, a funny statement, a funny video of dancing, whatever it is, sometimes those various things in the world can help me open up to accept some of the good things that are there that maybe I'm just having a hard time finding in the moment. I love how you tied the, like having a lack mentality or if you're struggling with something externally back to the internal, like where, like trying to figure out like, where am I not loving myself? And I think it ties into that whole conversation about how, you know, really understanding self-love and being able to practice self-love really does it allows you, it just pours into other areas of your life, right? And it, it's just such a powerful um, place to get to in, in personal evolution. And, you know, one thing you talked about at the beginning, and we've kind of talked about throughout the conversation is this whole notion of purpose, right? Like feeling mm-hmm. like when you were, you had a gun to your head and just hearing that voice, like you're not supposed to, you know, leave this earthly plane just yet and just realizing that you have a purpose to fulfill how would you define what purpose is because that's something a lot of people are constantly looking for and constantly trying to figure out so I just really want to hear your thoughts on you know what your definition on purpose is and what do you think personal fulfillment really is A few ways we could answer this around purpose, but I'll start here. I have personally been someone that has found myself so obsessed with the idea of needing a life purpose. Like I need my life to mean or be connected to this big thing that it actually created a lot of suffering for me. Like I just didn't know how to find happiness and enjoyment. And I like what you put falling in love with the idea of living. Like, can I fall in love with the idea of being alive without this big thing that I think I need? And so there's a few things. We can look at purpose on the lens of the lifetime. Is there a purpose of the entire life that we're in? Maybe. Is there a purpose of the, what's the purpose of the moment that I'm in right now? And whether we're talking about a lifetime purpose or the purpose of the moment, can I find some kind of answer or some kind of feeling that allows me to feel okay and feel good about it? And and I say that not to be tongue in cheek, I think would be the right language for this. Um, But I will say this, I have seen this idea of purpose change as I have changed. Meaning that when I was in college, my purpose was to get an education and become smart so I could have a life. Then when I was in uh, my corporate life, my purpose was to grow into a director position because I thought that's what was going to make me happy. And it offered me a lot. And, and then it got to a point where like actually chasing titles isn't the thing, but it for a period of time, it served a purpose and it helped me where I'm at today. And then for a period of time, I thought that traveling world was part of my purpose. It was relevant. It impacted me. It grew me. It helped me know who I am better but it's not the thing. And so what I, what I'm pointing to here is sometimes we can get really caught up in this external image of what a purpose is rather than realizing that all of these external experiences, all they're doing is showing you more of who you really are meant to be. So if you can look at life purpose from the lens of becoming who you're meant to be rather than doing what you're supposed to do, it can let go of some of the pressure and you can focus on it that way. And I'll give a personal example, because right now I have an inner true north that's guiding me and an outer true north that's guiding me. My outer true north isn't directed as like, this is the purpose for the rest of my life. And my inner true north is not necessarily the purpose for the rest of my life either. But for right now, in the phase that I'm in, which could change in a year, two years, five, is... My inner true north right now is to continue to feel, experience, and embrace the feeling of unconditional love towards myself, 
every human being that I meet and the entire experience of life. Because what I know and what I have experienced directly is the more I live from that, the more my life improves, the more I see lives around me improve because love is contagious. And I also know that that's what I'm deeply called to, that voice that we've been talking about this whole time. That's what's called me to that. My outer true north, so where am I putting that attention? Where am I putting that energy? Into my relationship with Julia. Because to me, our relationship is so informative and so important for our life and for our life ahead that I want to not only take the energy, the focus on my inner world, I want to make sure I'm clear on where I'm really pouring that energy and attention into because that allows a feedback loop to happen and it's going to evolve. Oh, I love what you said there about purpose. Um, just kind of thinking about it from the point of view of us becoming who we're supposed to be, right? That version of us that that higher version of our ourselves that we're supposed to get to because if you think of of life as a school we're constantly learning different lessons and um and i think when you said gave that whole um explanation of purpose i just kind of pictured some sort of like a graduation right where it's like you've taken all the hard courses you've you know passed the different um classes that you needed to take and now you're at a point where you're really living in your truth and your authenticity and you know really you know that is your that is somebody's purpose um so i love that definition i've started thinking about purpose recently as um just to be alive not to sound super cliche but i think it also ties into what you were just talking about becoming who we're supposed to be and the more you live um, and the more you evolve, you do end up getting to that um, higher version of yourself. Now, not ev not all evolution is positive, but we're we're talking in the on the side of like positive, you know, mm -hmm. fulfilling growth, obviously. So um, that that's really good. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, something just came to me was you're talking about to be alive. And in the context of fulfillment, what came to me was my favorite Nicki Minaj song. She goes, just, everybody's alive, but doesn't mean truly lives. Yes. And, Ooh, yes. And every time she says that, I've listened to that song more than I can count. Um, <laughs> I, I like Nicki Minaj. Yeah, and, I love but every time she'd say that, I'm like, oh, damn right. Just because you're alive doesn't mean you live. Yeah, and yeah. So when, when we start talking about fulfillment, it's one thing to be alive, but can you feel like you really live? Yeah. And fulfillment to me is, can you feel like you lived what deep down you feel like you were meant to live? Yeah. You know, and it's, again, it's being mindful of what feels unique for you. What is your, what is your gift that you want to give to the world? What is your way of navigating? If, if you're being alive and having fully lived, to use Nikki's words, um, was to just... Um, start a small business and run a small business and have a good family. And that, and I know that's a generalization, but, uh, or gross simplification, I mean, but if that's it, great. If you're, if you feel like, um, to fully live, you're meant to go and be a hit in Hollywood. Fantastic. If it's, it's what, what is it for you to fully live? Not what Hollywood says, not what news says, what does your soul, your heart, that inner guidance tell you your lived life really is? That's fulfillment to me. Yeah, that was really, really good. I, I totally agree with you. I think we live in a world now where everyone feels like they're not really living if their life isn't grand, if their purpose isn't, if they don't have like this, what they might consider like this great purpose to um to achieve but you're right like everybody comes into this life and like you said some people's purpose is maybe just to be a great father um and you know raise really amazing kids and live a very um fun joyous but simple life it all depends and i think it's up to people to um have the courage to 
define that for themselves. And I think a lot of what our purpose on earth is as well is to just really find the, just really understand that we're worthy of everything that we are asking for. Cause I think a lot of people feel unworthy for the things that they want in their life. So, yeah. um, yeah. You know, something I want to add because there's traps inherently in what we just talked about yeah, and about fulfillment. And so while we define what it is, I want to expand on that a little bit. Okay. And I want to expand on fulfillment is also letting go of the belief that you're not going to have moments where you're afraid. Yes. Fulfillment is also being able to embrace the moments where you have no idea what the hell you're doing and you have no way to answer any of the questions you have. Fulfillment, fulfillment is also being able to embrace sadness. Fulfillment is also being able to embrace not always getting what you want. Fulfillment and being okay with it and finding the place in yourself where you can be okay. And being able to navigate life in a way where you see the sadness and you embrace when it's there and you let it process and move rather than deny it or the fear or the anger or someone telling you no. Like when we can embrace that and the uncertainties and everything that is inherent in being alive and still feel like we're following our guidance, that is a fulfilled life that also recognizes there's just going to be some things that aren't always, uh, what is it, rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. It's, I, not, it's not the Instagram perfection picture. Is what I'm yes, saying. it's not the highlight reel. It, yeah. You know, because that's, that's what we see on social media all the time. Yeah, life is, you know, it has its ups and downs, but I think leaning into it. I also think the power of knowing how to frame situations mm -hmm. not from a place of denial but from a place of empowerment and not really feeling like you have no control over your life or it's everybody else and doing something to you i think the power of framing can really be helpful in moving through really difficult um situations oh let me tell you some of my most empowering moments i was kind of like this on a desk and <laughs> crying so hard it's not coming out of my nose and yeah I mean, and those are some of my most empowering moments because yeah. I was letting go with some really old things that needed to be let go. Yeah, absolutely. I um, mean, I look, I mean, it looked pretty, but I mean, <laughs> I was, I was doing the work. Yeah, exactly. I believe in releasing. I, you know, I cry a lot and I, I love, I don't love to see people cry, but I, I, you know, always tell people like crying is so powerful because you're just releasing a lot of that negative energy you're healing you're moving through traumatic situations or disappointing situations so it's very cathartic and yeah i i think i definitely see that being a very empowering moment for sure i have a, I have a small story to talk, talk yeah, on that. please go um ahead. i remember it was a it was two people were riding in a safari in africa and one woman turned to the next she goes oh my god how old are you she's like 50 she goes you look so young and joyful how she goes i cry a lot Yes, yes. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because I, 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 like I said, I think crying is so, it's a really beautiful thing. I think it's part of our biological function because it's it's meant to help us release a lot of things mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be keeping in our hearts or in our body. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Matt, this has been such a wonderful conversation. I loved that you, we switch roles there a little bit. I think my um, listeners are going to enjoy that portion of our conversation and the, the whole conversation at large. I think you shared so much wisdom and thank you for being so vulnerable. Um, one thing I always ask my um, guests before they leave, obviously, because this is called the word to the wise. I always ask for final words of wisdom to the listeners. You've dropped so many gems already. <laughs> But if there's something additional to what we've been talking about or something completely different that you keep in your back pocket as you go through life. Of all the things that everyone listening may be asking themselves about their lives right now, what do I do about my career? How do I make more money? How do I create more intimacy with my partner? How do I improve my body, my health? It's okay to want all those things. I want to first acknowledge that. It's okay to want a deeper relationship. It's okay to want more money. I want to normalize that first. 
And I also want to make clear that as you want these things in your life, ask yourself where you can accept yourself or embrace yourself just a little bit more. And when I say it, I must be more specific. It doesn't mean embrace yourself in a way that you immediately turn around and judge someone else from it. Because tearing someone else down is not an embracing of yourself. That's just a superiority energy, and that doesn't work. So where can you just come to a place of acceptance when yourself and just a deeper level, just one little bit that might actually open up an insight for what step is next. That That is powerful. And I, I know for sure when I was in some of my darkest moments, that was the question I eventually I r- arrived at that allowed me to move through those moments. So mm. thank you for sharing that, Matt. Where can people find you or connect with you? Yeah, they can connect with me at, well, I mean, they want to email no, the website, Matt, matthoganworldwide.com. And while they're there and I can send you the link, you can download the guide that I talked about. And my email is in there if anyone wants to reach out and just ask a question or just chat. Awesome. Thank you so much for stopping by the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a really fun one. 